Okay. So all that information is available uh, in our commercial paper. And who got the money? Hundreds and hundreds of banks. Any bank or that has uh, access to the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve Can you tell us who they are? No. So are you telling me that nobody at the Federal Reserve is keeping track on a regular basis of the losses that it incurs on what is now a $2 trillion portfolio? Or to respond in any other way to that, to that particular Mr. Chairman, my, my time is up, but I have to tell you honestly, I am shocked to find out that nobody at the Federal Reserve, including the Inspector General, is keeping track of this. First, let's call it federal to make it sound like it's a government operation. Next, let's add the word reserve to make it seem like there are reserves somewhere. Next, let's add the word system. National debt has grown too large for the national debt clock. The debt has been piling up so fast lately they had to drop the dollar sign to make room for an extra digit as the number turned over. They need a billion dollars for today's expenditures. So they go down to the Treasury and they ask for the money. And the Treasury official says, you guys have got to be kidding. We don't have any money here. You spent it all back in February or March. Everything we took in in taxes is gone. Not to worry, they say. Together they walk further down the street to the Federal Reserve Building. Now the Fed has been waiting for them because that's one of the reasons it was created. They walk in and the officer at the Federal Reserve opens up his desk drawer, pulls out a big checkbook, and he writes a check to the United States Treasury for one billion dollars. Now we need to ask a question at this juncture. Who put that billion dollars into the checking account at the Federal Reserve so that they could lend it or give it to the government? Where did that money come from? And the amazing answer is, there is no money. In fact, technically, there isn't even a checking account. There's just a checkbook. And that billion dollars springs into being precisely at the instant that the officer signs the check. Now, if you and I were to do that, we would go to jail. This is the reason the government is in this partnership, because the government has instant, easy access to any amount of money at any time without having to go to the taxpayer and ask for it in the form of direct taxes. But that's why the government is in it. The money that was created out of nothing and given to the government was spent by the government for its projects. out of nothing for the banks they didn't spend that for their projects they loaned it to us for our projects but they collect interest on that loan so the bottom line is that they collect interest on nothing which is not too shabby this is why the banking cartel is in the partnership because all of this becomes legal what are the consequences of this this money that is created out of nothing goes out into the economy and these new dollars dilute the value of the old dollars that were already out there. When you pour all these new dollars into the economic pot, it dilutes the dollars that are there, and so prices start going up and up and up. We have this phenomenon of inflation, which is the appearance of rising prices. I emphasize the word appearance because in reality, prices do not rise. What's really happening is that the value of the dollar is going down. If we had a money that they couldn't just create out of nothing, you would find that prices would remain stable over a long period of time. But when expressed in terms of those paper things we carry around, Federal Reserve notes, we call them dollars, they're not, they're Federal Reserve notes, they buy less and less and less because there are more and more and more of them 
being pushed into the economic pot of soup. So we lost some purchasing power. Somebody got your lost purchasing power. Who? Those people who got the lost purchasing power were the ones who were right at the point where the new money was injected into the pot because they got their hands on it first and at that point it had full value. But by the time they spent it and gave it to the next person and then they spent it and it started moving out toward the edge of the pot where most of us are, then it lost its value. But the ones up at the nozzle were the ones that had gained on our lost purchasing power. Those who gain your lost purchasing power are the two groups that comprise the partnership in the Federal Reserve System, the government and the banking cartel. Now this process is a tax. I don't care what you call it, inflation, or what name you want to give to it, it is a tax. This is why these two groups are in the partnership. On the government side, they are able to tax their citizens in any amount, unlimited amounts of money without the people even knowing that they are in fact paying a tax. And on the banking side, they're able to collect perpetual interest on nothing. What would you say to the majority of this Congress who has now co-sponsored, who have now co-sponsored the bill to require audits of the Federal Reserve? Do you think it would cause pr uh, problems for the Fed or for the economy if, if that uh, legislation was to pass? My concern about the legislation is that if the G GAO is auditing not only the operational aspects of our programs and the details of the programs, but is making judgments about our policy decisions that would effectively be a takeover of monetary policy by the Congress, a, re a repudiation of the independence of the Federal Reserve, which would be highly destructive to the stability of the financial system, the dollar, and uh, our national economic situation. cycles that we have had since the creation of this Federal Reserve mechanism is like a sawtooth. The economy expands slowly for long periods of time, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and people think this is going to go on forever. And then boom, it comes down, usually very quickly. A lot of people lose their assets. Notice, however, when you go to the bank and they give you something which costs them nothing to create, what do they want from you in return? signature on the dotted line for your car, your house, all your assets, right? So if you can't make your payments of this nothing money, they get your marbles. They always win. In times of whether it's expansion or contraction, it doesn't make any difference. It was planned that way, carefully worked out. These people are scientists, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, I haven't got a 
have enough money to feed my family. Mm-hmm. I make too much to get food stamps. I don't even make ten dollars an hour. Right. Now, if you took that money and bump it right in between the taxpayers in this country, we would stimulate the economy. You know why? Because we want pay off bills, pay off taxes, create jobs, and buy stuff that we need. Oh, I'll take my answer off the phone. I wrote you a letter and I said, hey, who would you love the money to? What were the terms of those loans? How can my constituents in Vermont get some of that money? Who makes the decisions? You guys sit around in a room, you make it? Are there conflicts of interest? Thank you.